glory, all the glory, all the honor, all the praises. We look forward to uh, the word that's, uh, your word that's coming forth to us today, and we know we'll be blessed by it. And we are also looking forward to worshiping, and we will get started. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I am, I'm stuck with loops here, so I have to be very precise. <laughs> and I was distracted. Okay. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Executed, not a man. Struck down, but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. But this joy is gonna be my strength. Though my sorrow may last for the night, this joy comes in on the morning. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. When I call, 
you answer me as you dwell in my brain. You search my heart and found that you know my every way. And still, you lead me on as you change my night to day. Deeper and deeper in the flow of your body. Deeper I get, deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. The closer you are. Deeper and deeper in the flow of your love. Deeper I get, deeper and deeper in the closer you are. No matter where I wander to. Your strength is always there Even if The morning wind Takes me to a distant shore Her and deeper In the flow of Deeper I get, deeper and deeper, deeper and the closer you are. Deeper and deeper, in the flow of the world. Deeper I get, deeper and deeper, deeper and the closer you are. Father God is our healer, our savior. He's he's everything to us. But the song speaks to uh, that. It's, for, it's from uh, Psalm 30. I will praise you, you with me.
I'm desperate for you Sure, my mic. Ah, it. Praise the Lord. We want to continue with our time of worship through giving. You know, giving is really part of worship to God. We're returning to Him what He's so amply given us. And uh, all He asks for is a tent. You know, I tell you, he, he does so much for us. You think about all the things that he's blessed us with, and he just asks for that little tenth, and then get, we get to keep the 90%, praise the Lord. So that's pretty good. And then there's offerings and gifts beyond that that we can do and we should do, praise the Lord. So in giving today, if you're watching by Internet, uh, you can give, praise the Lord. You can go to our website, fbc.org. And there's a link there that you can click, or you can use your Square Cash and, uh, and PayPal. PayPal donations at fbc.org. You can send to that. There's a neat trick with PayPal. Uh, this is a little tech tip, okay? <laughs> if you just do a PayPal transaction, they charge you a little fee. But if you send it directly to an email address, donations at fbc.org, they don't take the fee out. So that's kind of nice. It just saves a little money. Uh, but anyway, amen. Uh, I went analog today. I brought an actual analog Bible instead of a digital Bible. So, uh, you know, if I'm a little slow on the uptake, you know why. Instead of being so digital, you know. But praise the Lord. 
But uh, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll receive the offering. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time we come together to receive from your word. And now, Father, we want to just return to you from what you have so blessed us with, Father. And so we give these tithes and these offerings to you to use in the ministry to reach people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for that opportunity. and We do it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All righty, ushers, you can serve the people there. And like I say, if you're watching through Internet, then you can avail yourselves of those electronic means, uh, which are displayed, I'm sure, there. <laughs> Amen. We've gotten so used to all the technical stuff. I tell you, I just get a kick out of it. And uh, we are blessed. I mean, you think about here we might say, and we have to break all this down and put it all up, but hey, we can, we can shoot video with a little bitty device. We can take the sound and send it out through the internet. That's pretty amazing what we're capable of doing these days. Praise the Lord. All right, well, Children's Church, you're dismissed for your class. And if you will, the rest of you, open your... Just break... The message is healing is always God's will. Now, you know, we, we say amen, praise the Lord, we get excited about that. But I want you to think about something, I want you to consider that we are in the minority of Christians that believe it is always God's will to heal. Now, they'll, you, you know, you pin a Christian down. <laughs> and they'll say, well, now, you know, God can heal. He's certainly capable of healing. But now, uh, we just don't know if he will heal. You know, maybe he's got some purpose. Maybe it's not his time. Maybe you need to wait. Or maybe you're learning something through this experience. Well, I'll tell you what, sickness and disease is a terrible teacher. I can tell you from experience. Laying in bed, not being able to move in that hospital... I wasn't learning a blessed thing, except that it hurt, <laughs> and it didn't feel good, and I wanted it up, and I wouldn't be able to move, but you know, somehow there's I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they're just practicing medicine. They hadn't got it right yet, you know, but praise the Lord, they're doing the best they can, and I will say one thing for doctors and hospitals. They know that, in the, that uh, sickness is an enemy. They know who they're fighting. There's a whole lot of Christians, bless their hearts, don't know who they're fighting. They don't know that sickness and disease is an enemy. Millions of sincere. Now here's the thing. They're sincere. They're just sincerely wrong. Because they have been taught incorrectly. Hey, where you go to church is a matter of life and death. If I went to a church that believed in sickness and disease, that believed it wasn't always God's will to heal, then I'd be dead. Now you think about that. I mean, they had me in the casket, as Pastor says. You know, had the nails already being nailed in. Had a week to live, laying there in the hospital. But uh, if I went to another church, now, the church I grew up in, Baptist church, Southern Baptist church. Now, you know, praise the Lord, I got born again in that church. I praise God for the Southern Baptist. You know, they get a lot more people saved than a lot of Pentecostals, I'm sad to say. Shouldn't be that way, but unfortunately, it's the case. And I tell you, there's a lot of good Baptist uh, outreaches. But if I had stayed in that Southern Baptist church, and that's all I heard was Southern Baptist teaching, again, 
I'd be dead. Now, I'd be in heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, that's good. But there is better. Better is hanging around and doing what God's called you to do until you're ready and fully, uh, you know, content and you've lived out your days and then you go home and be with the Lord and happily go home and be with the Lord. Hallelujah. You've, you've fulfilled your mission. Amen. Amen. That's what we need. That's what, and it, there's a purpose because he has things for us to do. I mean, I could. Uh, yeah, kind of duh, <laughs> but that's the key. You what? It was tempted to just thing go on. Living this kind of victorious life is easy. On one the one hand. Now, it's easy in the sense there's nothing I have to do in and of my own power. But I do have to believe God. I do have to stand on the Word. I do have to <laughs> let the Word of God work in my life. Amen. And there's a lot of folks think that's hard. Well, it's really not that hard. But, it, you know, again, it'd been easy to just lay back and relax and let go. But that's not what God wants us to do. Let's look at Matthew chapter 8. I'm in the... Uh, Today's living version, I've kind of got to where I, I like this translation. It's different. Now, it isn't, it, it, you know, the living Bible is a paraphrase. This particular translation is a translation, but it's written like... One. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly... If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Well, let's stop right there a second. These millions of Christians that don't know it's God's will for them to be healed. Now, I think it's interesting that of all... ...in the Bible. I mean, you think about Jesus in his ministry ministered to tens and tens of thousands of people. There were a lot of cases where it says he healed them all. Description. Their approach was, it didn't go into all of those except in a few cases. Actually, if we look at it, either you takes the time to talk about what they thought, what they said, what their approach was, and so forth. This is one of them. So the man said, Lord, if you're willing, you can heal me. Now, he didn't have any doubt of Jesus' ability to heal him. And this is exactly where the majority of the church is today. They absolutely know that God can heal. that we're to pray, if it be thy will. Circumstance. One case. And that is, when we are praying concerning... ...a plumber, a preacher... <laughs> Do. Now, see, we're not even talking about what God. Me to do. I'll preach. If it be that. Looked up in the sky and it said GP. And he thought, oh man. 
The Lord wants me to go preach. GP, go preach. Well, he went out and tried. So he got to marry. That should be God's will. Pray and and miss God and be. Now, here in the Scripture, think about this. Jesus himself said, Jesus Christ is the manifested will of God in the earth. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Now think about that. Did Jesus say, well, now, brother... Let me go into the mountain. Don't they heal you? Or, you know, did he stop it even and say, Oh, Lord, is it your will? No, he didn't do any of that. He just said, I'm willing. Now, here's what's really interesting. Easy to read version. I didn't even know this version existed. But it's interesting. The ERV, or easy-to-read version, it says, Jesus touched the man and said, I want to heal you. Be healed. Immediately the man was healed from his leprosy. But... Check this one out. It says, so Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. Now again. Translation. This is a fairly new translation. And it says, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the Can you imagine Jesus standing there and said, oh, Boy, of course I want to heal you. What do you mean? There's no question. Now, why is that? Well, we know that God, first of all, is the pre-eternal, self-existent God. Nobody created God, right? And so his name that we see in the King James Version is talking about the pre-existent he's always been. That's hard for us to get our brain around. Beyond that, mm -hmm. 
Jehovah Rapha, that's Hebrew. It means I am the pre-existent Lord. I am that I am. That heals you. And actually, it goes a little further than that, that makes you well or mends you. In other words, he fixes us if we're broke. <laughs> Amen. You know, I fell and broke my wrist and my arm. And it's now healed, which means it's no longer broken. Well, that's what God does. He fixes us. He heals us. And that was the first name that he revealed. Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Well, what we can say about that then is, that is his nature. That's who he is. That's the very essence of who God is. So, of course, Jesus would say, of course I'll heal you. Why wouldn't I heal you? I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's who I am. That's my purpose. That's why I'm here, is to heal you. Now, it is true that he came to redeem us from sin, absolutely. But he also came to redeem us of sickness and disease. And it's the same sacrifice that he did or completed or became that allows us to be healed and allows us to be saved. In the spiritual sense, saved as well. Do you know the, the, what's so confusing, you might say, about it is, is that word saved is a full word. It's the Greek word sozo. And, uh, you know, the transliteration of it is sozio. And as I always like to remind people, if you want to be very technical in the Greek, you put a little D sound in there, sozo. That's just a technical thing. But I like to mention it so you can be accurate. <laughs> At any rate, sozo means to be saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially and socially, and delivered from all temporal evil. Wow. That's a mouthful. There's a lot to sozo. And yet Jesus came to sozo us. He came to save us. He came to deliver us. He came to heal us. He came to protect us from temporal evil. He came to take care of it all. Praise the Lord. So don't cut him short by saying, well, now I'll receive him as Savior and Lord, but I won't receive him as healer. That's what these millions of Christians are doing. They're cutting out part of the benefits. Now, we know, we know uh, you know, over in Psalm 103, 1 through 3, actually 1 through 4, if you'll really read it in detail, it lists out the benefits. And it says of those benefits, he comes to uh, deliver us from all our iniquities, and in the same sentence, it says, and heal all your diseases. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same uh, uh, sacrifice that Jesus made was for both. Brother Hagin calls it the twofold cure. He even had a message along those lines, the twofold cure. And as a matter of fact, he preached it one time, and a Baptist minister heard him preach it, and he said, Brother Hagin, can I just, yeah, I saw you have notes, can I take your notes? And Brother Hagin said, sure, I guess. He says, well, I want to take those notes, I want to preach them Sunday at my church. Now this is a guy who had never preached healing in his life, heard Brother Hagin preach it one time, got up in his church on Sunday morning, preached the message, the two-fold cure, closed his Bible, and said, all right, those of you who want to be healed, come down front. I got to give this guy credit for guts. <laughs> so he brings them all down there, lays hands on them, and they all get healed in the Baptist church. Now I tell you what, my Baptist church, they'd have had a fit. What in the world are you doing? I know that to be true through experience. Because my pastor at that church used to let me preach. And... Uh, until, uh, until I went to the full gospel business men's meeting up in Raleigh and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. And so I came and told my pastor, I said, Brother Baker, hallelujah, I tell you what, I got something to preach. Will you let me have Sunday night service? 
Sure, Brother Bill. No problem. So I got up, and I said, turn with me to Acts chapter 2. And I began to preach on the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. Now, the pastor's sitting on the back row, because he liked to listen in. You know, I mean, it's his church. It's, he's sitting on the back row. <laughs> listen to me preach. And I said, now, who wants to come down and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And the pastor jumps up and says, Brother Bill, take him to the back. Take him to the back. He wanted to get him out of the sanctuary. So about six women came, and we went back into the back Sunday school class, and they all received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I was so excited. Yeah. You know, little old high school kid. Yeah. November of 1973. Wow. <laughs> and so I go back now the next Sunday. And pastor gets up and starts preaching. How speaking in tongues is up the devil. <laughs> and I'm sitting out there going, what? I didn't know anybody would fight against it. So, I, as Brother Hagin said, I received the left foot of fellowship from among the Baptists. And I went out, and we started our own church back then in Denton, North Carolina. But uh, hallelujah. That's another story for another day. <laughs> but I did. I received the left foot of fellowship, and I know that it was crosswise their doctrine. Now, I do now. Back then, I didn't know. I thought it was in the Bible. I was reading it out of the Bible. I mean, Baptists, the one thing you, tell, you say about Baptists is they are sticklers for the Word of God. I mean, that I heard that my whole life. It's in the Bible. I believe it from Genesis to Revolutions. With no changes. And I, yes, that's right, amen. And then I get up and breach out of the Bible and they excommunicate me. And here I am, a kid. I'm like, what? <laughs> but anyway, I survived. Hallelujah. What long after that, I heard Brother Hagin and Brother Copeland. Heard about faith. Woo, praise God for that. Anyway, of course I want to heal you. Now, the will here, the word will is the Greek word thelo. T-H-E-L-O is the transliteration. Now check out what this, it means determined to choose or prefer, delight or desire. Now we could substitute that for what Jesus said here. He said, I choose, I prefer, I delight and desire. I am determined to heal you. Wow. That's pretty strong. He left no amb ambiguity about it at all. Now, you say, well, that's all well and good. I'm, I'm glad that this leper, you know, he, he got healed. And it was definitely, absolutely God's will to heal him. I mean, it's right there in the Bible that it was God's will. To heal. But now, Brother Bill, that doesn't mean necessarily that it's God's will to heal you or me or anybody. This is just this leper. Well, you remember what I said about how there's only certain things that God puts in his word for us to see the example of? Why well, put it in here if he didn't want to follow it up with, but now hold on before y'all get excited. Uh, no, this is just for this guy. This isn't for everybody. Why not tell us that? Well, that's not what he thought. Remember, he is the Lord that healeth thee. That's his nature. That's his, that's his identity. That's who he is, is the Lord that healeth thee. That's why Jesus said, of course I'll heal you. I am the Lord that healeth thee, after all. So, of course, it was his will. Now, what if it was just for this guy? Let's think about that a minute. Well, there's a scripture in Romans 2.11 that says there is no respect of persons with God. Now, that's King James. And King James sometimes may be a little hard to follow. But respect of persons. Let's look at it from another translation. Uh, translation, well, actually another verse of scripture I want to bring in too. Proverbs 28, 21. Proverbs 28, 21. This is the very first part of that verse. To have respect of persons is not good. He is never good. I like that translation. 
showing partiality. And the poor partiality the poor folks, oh well, whatever. They get the worst seats. Well, see, that's showing partiality. People look at one race or another, and they show partiality. We call that prejudice. You think God's against prejudice? Absolutely. So the thing is, showing partiality is never good, it says. So he's never going to be partial toward one or the other. He's going to treat everybody the same. And when he treats everybody the same, he treats them good. There's no respect to persons. Well, that's all. And everybody we see that he I'll accept that. But you know, he just doesn't heal like he used to. Well, now hold on. Let's go over. Yesterday and today. Christ is the same in the past, in the present, and in the future. So yeah, in the past, in the New Testament days, show respect to persons. Well, yeah, Brother Bill, I'm glad he healed you, but he ain't going to heal me. Then he's showing me respect to person. Now you're finally asking the right question. Why are you not healed? Well, if you look at all the... ...cases of people being healed. be done unto you. I could have died. Could have, yeah. But I chose not to. Oh, Dr. Bill. No. Not, uh, not presumptuous, not arrogant, not, e not even the least bit arrogant. I mean, look, as far as I was concerned, laid on that bed. Strength, I had no ability to get up. Tried to get up, couldn't get up. Tried to lift my arm, couldn't lift my arm. Hallelujah. At any rate, <laughs> nothing wrong with my voice. Hallelujah. Anyway, so lift up. Glory to God. I had only one need, and that was Get into the Word of God. Hear the Word of God. Speak the Word of God. 
nothing that healed me. I didn't heal myself. He will. No problem there because he's the one doing it. What I've got to do is believe. You're not going to walk on the water sitting in the boat. But people. No, he started to the Lord. Bring him back to the boat. So yeah, he walked out, and he walked back. He had a moment. It could happen to us. If I was laying in the hospital looking at the circumstances... that I am. So, the function. And I continue to confess that, and I continue to confess that, and I continue to confess that. And about that tone of voice. And I reached up with my hand and I grabbed the air. Now why did I do that? Because Gloria Copeland teaches about the word receive. The word receive means to take. To see. the Greek word lambano, it means and took my heat. It by force. I took my healing. condition. You can't tell. Do I every table there was tables. I came over I told you I seized it. We are to Take that little woman in Mark 5. 
A little over to Mark 5, had that issue of blood. If I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. As God designed it. Of it. I'm still seizing actively. Let that kind of marinate. Then I'm going to come back and go, yeah, but you know, it's, it's coming back on you. Yeah, but you know, uh, <laughs> remember what they told you the hospital? You don't get healed of liver problems. Uh, it, it never clears up. So uh, I'm sorry, but uh, it's coming back on you. Oh, every cell and every organ of my body functions perfectly as God designed to function. I have to stay in faith. And see, this is where a lot of Christians mess up. They don't stay in faith. Jesus said, They, they don't like conditions. And only then. Then you'll be my disciples indeed. So if I don't continue, I'm not a disciple. So I've got to continue. I've got to keep my faith out there. I've got to continually remind myself I'm the healed of the Lord. Jesus bore my sicknesses, carried my disease. That's easy. There's no problem doing that. And see, that's the thing. Our way of thinking. It's not hard to operate in faith. You just have to do it. And if we'll do it, it'll work. And I tell you what, I'm an example that it works. Belinda's an example that it works. Pastor and his toe, that's an example it works. Every single one of us here have received a healing and know it works. But we just got to keep working it. How Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I'm like the old guy. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just need a pew to hold on to you. Woo! But I tell you what, the Word of God works. Amen. And it continues to work, and will continue to work in our lives. Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah, every one of you out there on the Internet, I'm glad you joined us today. Glad you could come by. Remember that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. We'll see you next time. Praise the Lord. Well... Yeah.